Welcome, Seattle Revival Center. Welcome online if you just tuned in. And so uh, this is great. How many were here last night? Wasn't that awesome last night? Man, there was a lot going on in the Holy Ghost. There was a lot of angel activity as well. My wife during worship felt someone tug at her sleeve and she looked there and nobody was there. She went back into worship again. There's a tug on the sleeve. She looks down, nobody's there. I said, if that happens tonight, say, what's your name? <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> so angels, you know, praise God. I hope that doesn't surprise you, right? They're ministering spirits sent to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. Any heirs of salvation here? Come on. Yeah. Wow. Praise the Lord. Hey, let's stand up. My name's Greg Daly. I'm part of the leadership here. And I'm going to uh, just read you a very short psalm out of the Passion Translation. It's the one they read in heaven. <laughs> Every other translation, just get in line. Okay, so Psalm 119. Let everyone everywhere shine with praise to Yahweh. I love that. Let it all out. Go ahead and praise Him. You going to do that tonight? You going to let it all out? Come on. For He has conquered us with His great love. And His kindness has melted our hearts. His faithfulness lasts forever. And He will never fail you. So go ahead. Let it all out. What the psalmist says. Whoa. Come on. Father, we're here tonight to worship you. We love you. We exalt you. You are awesome. You said that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. We've got breath. So tonight, we're going to let it out. We're going to let it all out. And I'll exalt your name because you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. to come out and let it all out. You don't have to stay behind your chairs. I promise. Nobody will bite you. <laughs> but an angel might tug on your shirt or something. But come on, who wants that? Yeah. Bless the Lord Oh, you mighty ones Bless the Lord, you heavenly host. Bless the Lord, oh, you his angel. And let all the earth sing for his praises. Yeah. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Oh, yeah. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. You gotta bless the Lord tonight. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. For the Lord delights. For the Lord delights in showing. Showing mercy. 
delights in showing mercy tonight to me.
praise of God be on my lips and a two two edged sword be in my hand let the high praises of God be on my lips and a two two edged sword that's a G Shout, praise you 
on my hands from then. I'm on a quarterback. I'm going to let it out. I praise you with my dad. Praise you with my shout. Praise you on my instrument. I'm on a quarterback. I'm going to let it all out. I praise you with my dad. Praise you with my shout. Praise you on my instrument. I'm on a quarterback. I'm going to let it all out. I praise you in the atmosphere. Oh, have 
Come on, there's something about your praise that opens up the realm the miraculous. That you begin to praise him over your circumstances. See, it's not about what you're going through tonight, but it's about where you're going to. And it's not about your condition, it's about your position. So position yourself tonight to go high, to go high. in the glory caught up and caught away so Lord take us higher Lord take us higher into glory I was soaring with you Lord take us deeper Yes, and your grace 
Let's open the door into your chambers, yeah. And we're running out, running after you. Come on. Yes, we're running. Can the whole church get caught up tonight, Lord? We run. <laughs> yeah. We're running up to you. Whoa.
Lift your hands. There is an impartation from heaven here tonight. You think?
spirits for a while 
show us your ways now. Release your truth in the atmosphere.
It's the ladies, singing ladies. the men sing take joy my king take joy my king in what you hear everybody let you go out and obey let it be a sweet season Take joy, my king. Take joy, my king. forward through it go right through it and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna hear it go straight back yeah yeah come on go past it past it
go ahead and stand to our feet and just go and stretch your hands up and just forget about the person next to you we're going to use our our voices tonight how many how are you just enjoying just the open heaven we have here tonight i mean is it isn't his presence just so enjoyable do in this time it's totally up to you you can you can speak in a tongue you can use your own word choice to express your thanksgiving and gratitude you can come to him and make your petitions known asking what you will but don't let this opportunity pass you by because this is what it's all about this moment is what it's all about so don't let this moment pass you by because he's here he's here tonight he's here tonight he's here tonight so on the count of three let's lift up our voices together as one as one as one you may you might sing a song you might talk to him but let's engage together let's engage together and as we do this whole room will go up even to a higher level amen amen here we go one two three here we go here we go here we go here we go Your Lord. tonight. Let your voice, let your voice, let your voice, oh your glory.
not by might nor is it by power but it's by my spirit it's not by might nor is it by power it's by my spirit deep realms a higher place in me to spirit I am opening up the eyes of your understanding and I'm pouring out revelation from the eternal it's for you, it's for you, it's for you, it's for you. It's not by mind. Nor is it by power. It's by my spirit present to me. All you got to do is step through the door. <laughs> yeah. Because I made a way for you. All you got to do is step through the door. Then you will see how really thin the veil is between here and eternity. All you gotta do is step through the door. It's not by your might, but it's by my spirit. It's by my spirit. You don't have to strive. All you got to do is step through the door. It's really by my spirit. It's spirit to spirit. As you become one with me. It's spirit to spirit. The 
there's so much more in me. There's so much more Just believe it And receive it It's yours It's yours Just believe it We believe and receive it we receive it. it's yours it's yours believe it we believe it receive it we receive it it's yours it's yours promises they are yes and amen just believe it we believe it receive it we receive it it's yours it's yours it's yours, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. There's a window of opportunity. Step through the door. 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 Believe it. Receive it. Step through the door. Step through the door. Step through the door. Believe. Receive it, it's yours. So I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Think about it. Think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and I fly away. Oh, I believe I can soar. See me running through that open door. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can.
and I am on your shoulder Cause you raised me up to more than I can be We receive We believe it We receive it 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 All that you have promised God We're holding on We're holding on We believe it We receive it We believe it We receive it We believe it We receive it <laughs> And ain't nobody gonna take it away from me Ain't nobody gonna take it away from me I tell you this world didn't give it And this world can't take it away This revelation of mine mm -mm. This revelation of mine oh, oh, the world didn't give it The world can't take it away So I'm gonna hold on to your promise, Lord. I'm gonna hold on to your word. Cause it's full of life, full of glory, full of life, full of glory. Like nothing I've ever heard. And it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. It's all mine. You give it. So freely, Lord, you're so faithful. By the price you paid to open that door. And when I think you've raised us up, raised us up together. To sit at the right hand of my Lord, I'm going to rejoice. I'm gonna rejoice. rejoice. I'm gonna rejoice, yeah. Rejoice. I'm gonna rejoice. Rejoice. I'm gonna rejoice. Rejoice. I'm gonna rejoice. rejoice. I'm gonna rejoice. Somebody rejoice. I didn't have to work that hard because it's not by might and it's not by power but by the spirit of the lord it's not by might and not by power by the spirit of the lord it's not by might it's not by power but by the spirit of the lord
folks to rejoice So come on, lift your voice and praise him Well, yeah, always got a choice To rejoice, so someone get up and praise him Well, well, yeah, always got a choice To rejoice, so someone get up and shout his name Well, you always got a choice To rejoice Lift up his name and praise him, praise him Praise him So lift up your voice and come on and praise him. You always got a choice to lift up your voice. So lift up his name and praise him. The ancient days of great I am. Oh, my Savior, my, my Redeemer. Well, you always got a choice. So lift up your voice. So come on now. We're gonna, we're gonna praise him. I, I, Liberation be my mission. Got revival and reformation. Well, A I ain't no rival. I'm a son of revival. So I'm gonna partner with the awakening. Well, there's no going back. We're pressing in. We're going to a place where no man has ever gone before. Oh, check out all the open doors. Oh, well. Always got a choice to so lift up your voice and praise him. It's too easy to be part of the crowd that wants to be grumbling and complaining. Well, always got a choice to so lift up your voice. Oh, all right, all right. Are there any rumblers here tonight? Are there any rumblers here tonight? Jerry, you have your bite? Come on. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, you never seen a pastor beatbox before? Come on. Uh, get on your feet. Let's go. We gotta get started all up on here. To the one. 
a choice So lift up your voice Come on everybody Come on waka waka praise him Someone come on lift your voice And come on and praise him Jimmy I sense that you got some more You got some more Everyone put your hands up like this Go Oh Oh, Father, 
to rise from your throne. Oh, Daddy, pick up that telephone. There's a generation that be calling you. We say, now is the time for awakening. Awakening. You say harvest. Awakening. Oh, come on. We say awakening. We declaring awakening. Oh, right. Someone shout tonight. Jesus. 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 Whoa. Give like five high fives and say it's your time. It's your time. It's your time. No more delay. No more delay. No more delay. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. Come on. Come on. Rise and shine. It's your time. Come on. Come on. Thanks, God. All God's people come up. Yeah. Darren's back with the brand new edition. I don't, I don't. Everyone, let's give a big thank you to Steve Swanson tonight and the worship team. Thank you so much. Amazing job. How many of you know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom? Someone say amen tonight. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. There is freedom. How many of you know, I love, I love the message, the mantra that comes out of Bethel, that God is good and he's in a good mood. Do you believe that tonight? He's in a good mood. Absolutely. Well, we, it's already been such a fun, it's already been such a fun time. I mean, if this was the last night, I would say it was a home run, but we're only in night two. We're going all week right through Sunday and we just invite you to be a part of this whole week. In fact, this morning at 10 a.m. on a Monday morning, at 10 a.m., there was a remarkable crowd of people here, ready to receive, hungry for the presence of the Lord. And so, man, there is such hunger right now in this region. There is so much hunger. And how many of you know that hunger is, is irresistible to the Lord? How many of you know that? Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be a fun night tonight. Um, Jeremy Nelson's in the house tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Along with the Elisha Revolution interns, they're in the house tonight. <laughs> I got to hang out with these guys last week and let me just tell you, these guys are on fire these guys are on fire, you're going to get to hear from them I, I think a little bit tonight but listen, we're going to engage in the offering tonight and so would you welcome Andre Ashby wow, that, that was amazing Pay for a better concert. I mean, well, better concert. Uh, <laughs> wow. I get the honor of taking up the offering tonight. And when they asked me this morning, I was thinking about what I should share. And um, this morning, I, I begin to talk about uh, the latter house being greater than the former. And how that the latter house represents a people and the former represented a place. Now, <laughs> when Moses was building the tabernacle, is this loud or is it just me? Is that going? Can okay, you maybe take the echo off? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> when Moses was building the tabernacle, uh, the children of Israel were, were commanded to bring gold and uh, fine linen and stuff like that to build the tabernacle of Moses. They, it was they had to bring the best to do it. But there's something that really struck me about that whole passage of scripture. That there was a point where Moses had to say, stop, you've brought enough. Stop, you've given more than enough. 
And I, I believe that there's something that's connected to the move of God. And that is the generosity of the people. And you're having an opportunity to sow not into a building, but to sow into a movement that's going to touch the earth. And you may not be able to go to all the nations, but you can send your prayers and you can sow into the nations by sowing into the kingdom of God. So you have to realize that you're never sowing into a man, you're sowing into a mission. And I'm here to tell you, this is good seed. This is good ground. The Lord promised me a long time ago. He said, Andre, I will never take you anywhere that I don't plan on moving. And I know that this house, that this region is ripe for the move of God. But how many know it takes finances to move the gospel? The Bible says that he gives power to gain wealth so that his covenant can be established in the earth, not so that you can have three Mercedes Benz. Not so you can have five mansions. Just have the one. I mean, <laughs> God wants you to have nice things. But look. He gives us power to gain wealth so that his covenant can be established in the earth. And I believe God is giving us an opportunity tonight to sow a supernatural offering. How many of you know that this kind of conference usually costs like 150 bucks? They're doing this for free. Just because the Lord said to them to sow this back into the region. Now there's something that is, 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 is reciprocal in the body of Christ. As you sow, you get back. As you go to the trading floor and you lay down the offering, God releases things from the eternal realm. <laughs> so it takes money for the gospel. And I know folks get weird about money, but look, money money's nothing to God. I mean, his... The streets of heaven are paved with gold. God is offering us an opportunity to partner with him to release his covenant in the earth so that Jesus can receive the rewards of his suffering and he can return. So I want you to ask the Lord right now, so bow your heads. Ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to give? If it's five dollars, give five dollars. If it's a million, it's spelled M-I-L-L-I-O-N. <laughs> give that. Be obedient to God. And there's this old uh, gospel song that we used to sing is, you can't be God-giving no matter how hard you try. You can't be God-giving. No matter how you try. So I dare you to try him. Put him to the test. And when he speaks to you, be obedient. How many of you have heard from the Lord what you're supposed to give? So I want you to take that offering, write the check. How do you do it? Uh, you can text uh, to give at 425-441. What does that say? 3403. Cash is good. We like cash. And write checks. No faith checks, though. <laughs> Unless God tells you to. What, what, and write it to Seattle Revival Center or SRC. Huh. So I want you to get your uh, seed in your hand. And we're going to give it as a wave offering to the Lord. Is that cool? I don't see any seeds in folks' hands. There we go. And if, you know, if, it's, if you have to call, wave your phone. And I'm going to pray. <laughs> and I'm believing. What if the whole expense for the conference was paid for tonight and the rest could go into missions? Wouldn't that be awesome? Can we believe God for that? So, Lord, we thank you. I thank you that 
The generosity of your people is connected to your move. So, God, I thank you that this is a generous people. Lord, that they don't need to be manipulated. They don't need to be stirred up. They listen to your voice and they're obedient. And I ask that right now that you would bless them and that you would bless this offering that it may be established to establish your covenant in the earth so that you, Lord, can receive the rewards of your suffering. Lord, we call forth harvest. We call forth harvest from this seed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so let's come rejoicing. No one's moving. You got to move. Because on this particular day, back in 19, no, no, <laughs> on this particular day was the birth of Steve Swanson. So I know this is a little awkward making you play your own birthday song, but would you stand up to your feet? Let, let's sing, let's sing to Steve. Andre, will you help us sing, the, sing happy birthday? Come on, lift up your voice now. The critics are going to be blasting us on that one. There's like worship the guy, you know, like. <laughs> on, <laughs> there's hello. And uh, seriously, hello everyone watching on Facebook. It's good to have you watching tonight. And hello everyone here. Can you just uh, turn the ringing down just a little bit? <laughs> just having fun. Look, um, tomorrow morning we're going to be back here at 10 a.m. Because Jeremy Nelson is going to be back in the morning. That's going to be incredible. And then we're going to be here tomorrow night at 7 p.m. with Papa Che on. So it, it's going to be. And then the Hesh job is coming in. That's going to be. That's going to be a lot of fun. In fact, Mahesh is with us for two nights. Uh, uh, so that's going to be incredible. And then we have uh, Miranda Nelson coming in with, uh, with five of the Elisha Revolution. 
um, interns. And then we have Charlie Champ coming in for Saturday night and Sunday. Charlie's in India right now. He'll just be flying into Seattle real soon. Um, uh, it got crazy in India. They had to get him, pull him out of the city because of, uh, because of the threats and stuff that were coming against him. But just yesterday, um, a, a, a mute person was able to speak. They got, their, they got their voice back along with a whole bunch of just incredible miracles um, out of India. So he's going to be coming in on fire. He's going to be ready to come in and rock and roll here in Seattle. So anyways... We're in for just a great week, and it already has been just a tremendous uh, week, and you're in for a real treat tonight um, because we have, uh, we have a, a friend of this house um, uh, with us tonight. Um, he's been stewarding alongside of his wife um, the, uh, the fire and glory outpouring. They are in night 400 and something. It's, it's up in the 400s. But not only that, but Revival has just broken out in London. So they're hosting the Fire and Glory outpouring and the London Awakening um, at, at the same time, which is, which is just awesome. And so, um, uh, and they also have some other really, really big news uh, coming up. But I'll let Jeremy share with you about that because it's just an, it's just an incredible miracle of uh, what God has done. Uh, 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 with this, with this move of God in San Diego, and God really is establishing this as a long-term move. And so, like I said, I'll let I'll let Jeremy talk to you um, about that. But you're in for you're in for a real treat. Um, if you've seen Jeremy before, awesome. You haven't seen him like this. I'm telling you, Jeremy and Miranda have been upgraded. Just just the just the just the just the presence that that they're walking in, just the faith that they're walking in. It's just incredible. I also got to be a part of Jeremy's commissioning just this last week um, uh, at the HIM conference. And so um, uh, it was incredible as, as uh, Papa Che and Patricia King and James Gall and several others came around Jeremy um, to, uh, to basically uh, uh, publicly acknowledge uh, Jeremy as an apostle. And so that, that was just incredible to be a part of that. Um, uh, Jeremy doesn't make a big deal out of that, but there's, some, there's a difference between calling yourself something and then having other people that are walking in the stuff really validate that. Um, and so th it, that is important. It is important not to just be recognized in your own sight, but to be recognized and to be submitted um, to, uh, 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 to overseers within the church, to fivefold overseers in the church. Jeremy and Miranda really truly are uh, 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 submitted to mothers and fathers in the faith. They walk in a tremendous level of integrity, uh, and it, it's a real honor to call Jeremy and Miranda friends. I would like for you to welcome, with a big West Coast rumble, to Jeremy Nelson tonight. Come on. Amen. Come on, let's give a rumble for Jesus. Amen. Woo! I love coming here. Every time I get to come here, it's such an honor. It's a privilege. And I just, I love what God's doing. There's such a realm of freedom. Did I hit like a spot that was like, <laughs> oh, Jesus. But uh, hey, listen, I want, um, could the interns stand up here? Would you guys stand up just for a second? Say hello to everybody. And uh, David as well. Listen, these guys. These guys are awesome. They're uh, in their second week of their internship. We are doing an Elisha Revolution internship. We, uh, this is our first batch. And listen, these guys are amazing. They actually went to the streets today and saw 12 salvations. Uh, you know, they, they, they saw a 75-year-old Sikh man give his life to the Lord and pray the prayer of salvation. And, uh, you know... I was laughing because I'm just like joking around in a green room. I'm like, you know, how many people did you pray for well, on the way up here? And they're like, 35. And I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, good, just keep doing that. You know what I'm like, Lord, I think I need to pray for some people, you know. But, um, but these guys are awesome. And, and, you know, my wife Miranda, she's coming to the end of the week. Uh, she, so I got, the, I got the guys with me. She's going to be bringing the girls with her. And, um, and, and so we're, we're excited because we really believe that 
Um, you know, God is releasing an Elisha revolution. And, you know, if you don't understand what that is, it's just that God's raising up a double portion generation. And he's going to raise up a generation of revivalists and reformers and, uh, you know, those that I call, um, you know, servant hearted leaders. Because how many know that's what it's all about, right? And, and how many know that the, the Bible says that Jesus, the Son of Man, it said that he came, uh, you know, to serve, not to be served. And out of that kind of a model, we believe that God is going to begin to raise up leaders and he's going to begin to raise up um, revival and reformers and, and we're going after the millennials in the 30s and unders and I love it because uh, they just catch the anointing and go you know and it's like uh, and, and, and so uh, I, I believe that you know Jesus wants to begin to take back what the devil has stolen and we're going to see an entire generation raised up to take the kingdom of God in and out of the church. And, um, you know, Elisha anointed Hisiel as king over Judea, which represents, uh, I, I believe, touching, you know, outside the church. And then he anointed Jehu as king, which is like the radical revivalist who's, you know, you can't stop him. He, he, he rides in his chariot furiously after Jezebel to destroy her. And, 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 and so I'm excited because that's what we're believing for and raising up interns and even uh, more than... More more than anything, we, we just want to see God glorified. Woo! Oh, I'm starting to get your apple wine thing going. Huh. We had so much apple wine at the session that, <laughs> that, that Darren was supposed to speak in that everybody was knocked out. I mean, and, and, I, mean I, I don't know if I've ever had a service where I was laid out on the actual stage with one leg up, but that's what happened. And, and I, I'm telling you, it was a crazy time because there was like this collision between two anointings. And I, how many know that, the uh, like it says in the book of Isaiah, it says that the new wine's in the cluster, right? And, and, and so it was so exciting to be able to, um, to link up and to, to be able to have, you know, Darren out and, and, and the team. And, and, and when I say the team, I'm talking about the family because the little, I mean, listen, his kids were releasing words of knowledge. Woo! Come on, somebody. <laughs> At one point, I tried to pass it off to Andrea, but she was so drunk she couldn't do it either. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, <laughs> so we actually had to go get Darren, pick him up, and throw him in a chair with a microphone. <laughs> and then he could preach. It was amazing, you know? Uh, sometimes you just got to make a demand on the anointing. Because I'm looking there going, dude, we're just going to all roll around. If, if that's what Jesus wants, then cool. But at least you're going to watch him roll around. And then if you get sober enough to preach, you can do it. How I many know that's positioning, right? <laughs> and then he brought a brilliant message. It was awesome. On the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And, and um, whoo, Jesus, I could feel the fire right now. Uh, listen, put your hands out just like that. <clears throat> ha, ha, ha. Whoo, there we go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, for the many angels that are in this place right now. Lord, I thank you for your spirit moving all around the room, God. I thank you, Lord, that tonight is going to be a night of, of, of a refreshing, Lord. It's going to be a night of an open heaven. It's going to be a night, Lord God, where you release awakening to people in this place. Whew, how many know God wants to awaken love, right? He wants to awaken love. He wants to awaken hearts. He wants to awaken us to the reality of the presence of Jesus. He wants to awaken us to the reality of what he's doing in this season. And uh, I'm excited because Zechariah chapter 4 uh, it talks about, the, uh, you know, it talks about the, uh, the angels of awakening. I saw angels coming into the room and then Steve uh, began to sing. I, I went up to him and I said, man, you're preaching my message. You're si well, I said, you're singing my message. How many know that's good? Because, uh, I mean, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses or singers or whatever you want to say, rappers, you know, uh, the word of the Lord is established, right? And I begin to see these angels ascend and they go up and they go down and they go up and they go down and all this stuff. And, and then he starts singing it. And, 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 and so I want to just say this is uh, that Zechariah chapter four talks about angels of awakening. And it, and it says that there's this prophet named Zechariah. And I mean, listen, this, this dude is like a visitation machine. It says that he's awakened as a man was awakened out of his slumber by who? An angel standing before him. And you know what happens? He has an open vision and he sees what? The lampstand or the menorah of God standing right in front of him. And he hears the voice of the Lord make a declaration. And the voice of the Lord says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And then all of a sudden he sees the condition. 
of the church in his day. It's destroyed. They're in captivity in Babylon. I mean, listen, it's hopeless. It's like hope deferred is so set into the hearts of the people of his day that, that there is no vision for God doing anything. People have forgot about God. And, and, and all of a sudden, he hears the voice of the Lord say, Who are you, O mountain? In the sight of God become a plain and, and, and all of a sudden God releases shouts of grace, grace and, and, and all of the opposition is leveled right before him. See, so God's about to release an awakening. <laughs> and in fact, he is releasing an awakening. And I'll just say it like this. It's a fresh awakening. Woo! Because I want to say that because here's what we do. We like to, how I many know we, we, we love Jesus, right? But we have the God who was and who is and who is to come. And a lot of people live in a place where they, they, they only know God as the one who was and the one who is to come. But God wants us to know him as the God who is right now. He wants to awaken our hearts. And I love it because what is God doing with these uh, fresh moves of the Spirit that He's releasing? Listen, He is awakening a generation to the Holy Spirit like never before. In fact, I believe that God wants to reintroduce Himself to a generation. He wants to reintroduce Himself to the church. And, and I love that because revival is a time of, of, of introductions. It's a time of reintroductions to some where all of a sudden God will reintroduce Himself uh, in, in one way so that He can then reintroduce introduce you to the new you how many know that revival is a time of refreshing it's a time of raising the dead uh, some people need it more than others <laughs> i'm telling you and, and 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 i'm not even in my message i'm just bringing a little bit of this little little sn snippet of, of of what i believe god's doing in this season and 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 the purpose behind what he's doing and and here's what the purpose is he wants to awaken a generation to the power of the holy ghost he wants to awaken a generation to the power of the fullness of god because the lampstand of the lord represents the seven spirits of god who are before the throne and it represents that, 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 that no matter what it looks like god can turn the situation around Woo, see this is a prophetic word for some of you in this place tonight <laughs> This is a prophetic word for, for, for movements in this place tonight, for, for people that are pastoring churches, for people that are business owners. This is a word for you because God is about to make that mountain of opposition that's standing in front of you. It looks so massive. Listen, he's about to cast it into the sea, and I'm telling you, he's about to release breakthrough. And so the first thing I want to do right now is those in this room who, who are dealing with the mountains of opposition against their business, against their ministry, against their family, whatever it is, just stand to your feet right now. God wants to just break this thing. Uh -huh. Woo, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Lord, we just thank you for a fresh awakening right now. Lord, that you would awaken hearts, God. Lord, I thank you that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And you said to come on to you, those who are heavy laden, heavy burden, and you would give them rest. You would give them peace. And I thank you that right now, Lord God, we shatter the yoke of heaviness right now. And we release like a sword the word of the Lord tonight. And I thank you, God, that everything that hinders, Lord, that every heavy weight that ensnares and entangles, Lord, and holds people back from knowing you, God, we just we, we take that sword of the Lord and we say, loose right now. Woo. And we release the awakening anointing, God, that people would be awakened out of their slumber. People that are watching online that have forgotten how good God is, forgotten how powerful He is, forgotten how amazing He is. We release right now awakening over you in Jesus' name. Woo! Release it right now. Whoa. Hey. And Lord, I thank you for grace, 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 great grace. Same thing. Lord, we release it right now. And Lord, I thank you for every burden, every burden, Lord, that's not you. Lord, I thank you it falls to the ground right now. It's removed right now, God. Woo! Whoa, there we go. <laughs> and I thank you for that glory of God anointing. Whoa! Shake, hey, ha, ha. Woo! Coming on, people, right now. Hey, hey, hey. Whew. 
In Jesus' name. <laughs> Come on, give God a hand. So that's what I call the appetizer. And we're going to have a main course and we're going to have some dessert. But you know what we might do is have the dessert first. Because how I many you know that's how good your papa is? Now listen, your mama will tell you you got to eat your food before you have your dessert. But your papa will be like, you want some dessert? <laughs> Whoo, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, <laughs> Jesus. Whoo. Come on, right, right in here I feel like there's someone like sciatic nerve issues. It's like the pain that goes right down. The, who is this person? That's right. Yeah, right, right there. Come here, in the red. Yeah, is it you? No, no, it's right here in this area. Is there someone right in this area? Sciatic nerve pain goes down. The, that's you? Here, come here. Come here. Come here. Don't worry. The only thing you got to lose is your sickness or your, your pain. I mean, like, come on. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Who? Who are you? <laughs> now, I'm calling her, man. No, but he's, he said to come up to you. Well, here, sit on that front row over there. I'll come back to you in a second. But don't go anywhere. Here, come over here. Listen, you guys, I want to I wanna lay some uh, protocol rules here without hurting anybody's feeling. Uh, uh, listen, the word of knowledge works like this. Jesus said in John 5, 19, he said, I only do what I see my father doing or I only do what I hear my father saying. So I, I, I'm just sharing that with you because I don't want it to seem insensitive if I tell somebody that I'm not going to pray for him right away because uh, I want to follow the Holy Ghost to the T because when you follow the Holy Spirit down to the very last, you know, minute detail, that's how crazy creative miracles happen. And, and it's really the way that it works. Woo, he's already getting you. You better get ready, man. Woo, just put your hands up right now. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for your glory. I thank you, God, right now for that realm of creativity. I thank you that even the discs in the back are being recreated right now, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that even the nerve damage that's going on, Lord God, in her body, Lord, the tingling in the feet, Lord, even the tingling in the hands, Lord, I thank you, God, that right now, Lord, healing power comes on my sister. And we just bless her in the name of Jesus. Woo! Oh. Woo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo, Chris, come here. Both Chris's, come here. Here, help, help me get these guys. Or get, get these guys. Help me get her up. If I let her stay there too long, she'll go to the third heaven and start hanging out with Jesus. We won't get any testimony. So first, let's get some testimony, and then we'll... we'll uh, there we go. Woo. Here, I want you to just move around. Oh, she's good. She's good. Ha. Uh, I forgot. We're in the drunk tank. <laughs> Check your body out. How does that feel? There we go. How's that feeling? Feels better? Here, come here. Watch this. This will be good. No, no, seriously. I'm just getting more from the Lord. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Whew, Lord, we thank you. Power into that body in Jesus' name right now. Whoo! And I command every trace of pain to go. Whoo! See, that's why I brought two of them. Whoo! Here, help her get back up. So this is Chris and this is Crispy. They're both Chris, but they nicknamed him Crispy. Here, now take another walk. Whoo! Well, <laughs> this is hilarious. Whoo! There we go. How's that feeling? How's that feeling? Come on, thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God a hand. Here. Here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Here, just put your hands up again. Just put them up. There we go. That's the key, you guys. Like, hands up means you're receiving. If I'm giving you a $100 bill, you're like, yeah! And if not, you got a poverty spirit. Oh, forget it. I was going to do something else. But, whoo, Jesus. Just, just, I don't know, wrap her up in a blanket or something. There we go. Yeah. Whoo, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen, ha, ha. Thank you, Father. I feel like there's someone in a, a car accident, like over on this side, and there's like a disc damage thing in the neck. Is that you? Yeah, and it's like even this nerve damage that goes down, like, like down into the feet and the back. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, come here. Come here. Jesus loves you. Whoo, thank you, Lord. Come on, just give Jesus a big hand clap. Whoo. Here, right there, right there, right there, right there. Oh, Jesus. Whoo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name? Naomi. Okay, here we go. Lord, we just thank you for Naomi. Lord, I just thank you for a brand new back. Whoo, let it be released right now. Whoa, in Jesus' name. Whoo. There we go. Nice and gentle. I just speak right now to all nerve damage. Release right now. We just command those nerves to be recreated. We command the neck to be just touched with glory. We command right now for every effect and everything that's been robbed by the thief to be restored in the name of Jesus right now. Whoo. <laughs> Come help me get her up. <laughs> Woo, this will be fun. I love it. You guys are so drunk in this place. You know what you're doing? It's, it, it makes it easy. Woo. I know you guys are used to the soaking. Here, move your neck around. Watch this. This will be fun. How's that feel? How's that? A lot better than it was. <laughs> Come on. Woo. Here, move it again. Move it around. How's that feel? Pretty good. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Now, was there... What about the pain that was going down? Just move around a little bit. I'll let you get drunk in a minute. Just check it out. Whew. How's that feeling? Yeah, I can move. Come on. So before you would feel the pain? All the time. Come on. She said all the time, you guys. Before and now it feels good? I feel a nice coolness going down through my body. Come on. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Yeah, and I just see even the, uh, I see the hand of the Lord just coming on you and touching you. And, and I see like this prophetic anointing coming. And I just see like your heart crying out to the Lord saying, God, I really want to see. I really want to see. That's been one of your prayers before the Lord. And you've even been praying that prayer even like Elisha did for his servant where he said, Lord, open my eyes to see. And, uh, and, and so I see the Lord opening your eyes. And, and I'm telling you, we're just going to give you a good shot <laughs> of the Holy Ghost. We're going we're gonna to pray, and I believe God's going to open up the eyes. So, Lord, we just bless. Whoo! In Jesus' name, open right now. Ah. Ah. Ah, I love it. We can get... This will be funny. Whoo! There we go. Just keep receiving. Wow, it's so easy here. You guys have just carved this thing out over 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, whatever, 15, 20, 80. <laughs> no, I'm saying I could see it's like, woo. Jesus. You right here in the red. Just stand up. You guys good if I give some dessert out first? Yeah. No, no, just stand right there. Just put your hands out. That's good. I, I like that. That was very obedient. <laughs> Now I just see the Lord just touching you, and I see the, the I see like the, the the power of God coming on you, and it's coming down your arms and into your hands, and I see the Lord anointing your hands. He's anointing those hands, and uh, there, there's a healing anointing going right in them right now. And and listen, that pain that pain's gonna go. That, that uh, things and and there's creative miracles coming into your hands where you're gonna lay hands on people. They're gonna be instantly healed, instantly set free. And I'm telling you that that anointing of deliverance and power, God is putting it on your life. And and I just see your heart crying out for this and asking the Lord for it. And I even feel like I don't know what this is in the in the back here, like up on the neck, the stress or, or what is it? It's like in it's like down in here. Does this make sense? In in the back. Uh, I'm I'm feeling like. Uh, well, whatever, we'll take it. <laughs> here, this will be good. Because I, I, I can feel, like, here's how the words of knowledge work for me. I start to feel things. Have you been dealing with something in the neck and, the, like, some stiffness there? Yeah, see, I could feel this stuff. Go, just put your hands up. He's going to get you. Here, come out here. We're going to get you. I said we're because we're all ministers. ha, <laughs> ha. 
Here, just, this will be fun. Oh, Jesus loves you. What's your name? Kathy. Kathy. Lord, we just release that healing anointing. And I just speak to that infection in the ear. Release right now. Whew. <laughs> and right now I just speak. <laughs> How's that? My hands are rubbing. Your hands what? Tink they're tingling. Come on, power's on your hands. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Go ahead. Just release yourself from that. <laughs> Father, we thank you right now. Every pain, spirit of infirmity, release right now. In Jesus' name. How's that? Woo. Whoa. There we go. How's that feel? I just feel the presence all over me. Is the pain gone? How's that feel? Much better. But it's Much better. That's awesome because we didn't even pray for the back yet. How's the hands feeling? They're feeling good. They're feeling good? Yeah. What was going on with them? They're just warm and tingly. and They get that way? Yeah, see, when I looked at you, the Lord said hands. I'm going to do something in the hands for her. And, and what's that? I pray in the healing room for people. Come on. Woo! So you're going to get an upgrade. Put your hands up. See, I love that. Woo, Jesus. Lord, I just thank you, God, right now. Creative miracles. Whoa. Supernatural release right now. Whoa. Let it be released. Woo. Yeah, and Father, we just thank you for that disc in the back being just recreated or things going on in the lower back. All the pain goes now. Whoo. Ha, 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 ha. Jesus is so good. Okay, this is a weird one, but I'm feeling it. Is there someone that's like, ha, ooh, <laughs> my friends. Um, is there someone that's like on this side of the room that lost their sense of smell? Who is this? It's like lost your sense of smell. Yeah, you, come here. Is there someone, you lose your sense of smell? Come here. Jesus is going to heal this. This is, uh, I love Jesus. He's so good. <laughs> Here come. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> ha ha. Woo. Yeah, there's a there's a glory right there. Here, this will be a fun. Father, I thank you for that sense being restored <laughs> now mm, in Jesus' name. Woo. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Shabarabanda, yabarabando, yabarabunda. Shebedebete, yabarabata, yabaraboto, yabedebete, yabarabanda, yabarabondo, yabaraboda. Sheke. Okay. Who's got some, some, um, <laughs> here, hold up, hold up, hold up. Who's got some fragrance? <laughs> Anointing, perfume, whatever smelliest. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm having fun. Don't give me a hot dog in your purse, but. <laughs> And don't, and don't think it, hap it doesn't happen. I was in a meeting with Bobby Connor. He's like, who's got food today in their purse? And some lady busts out a half-eaten hot dog. Whew. Here, come here. This will be fun. Take a good sniff. It smells. You can smell? I can smell. So it opened? It opened. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. How it smells? How long has it been blocked? It's been a long time, some years, actually. Yeah, yeah. And how did you lose the sense of smell? I don't know. I don't really know, actually. And you can smell that? I can smell that, yeah. Come on, give Jesus a big hand. Ha, ha, ha. Woo! <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Who over here gave a car away? Like something with a vehicle. Uh, who gave that car away? Uh, like someone on this side. You, you, you sewed a vehicle into someone. It's easy to either gave a car away or you did not. Who, who are you? Yeah, yeah, hold up. I'm, I'm feeling you did. And you did too? Ha, 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 ha. Oh. Jesus. You know what? We'll do the double-double. Stand up. Stand up, both of you guys. 
Yeah, the devil. You guys can. There, there we go. Whoo. Did someone give two cars away? Yeah. I, I had to eliminate it. I'll bless you, but <laughs> she said sorry. <laughs> here, come here. Here, come up here. You gave away two cars. You're, you're next on Jesus Wants to Love on You. Come here. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Whoo. I want you to know this. The Lord says that favor is going to be your flavor. Yeah, and that, 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 listen. Whoo, you're going to taste and see that the Lord is good in this season. And where there's, been, uh, where, where there's been this negative taste in your mouth because it's like you've sown and you've sown and you've sown and not seen the reaping like you should. And, and, and I, I'm telling you, the Lord says this. He says he's going to wipe the bad taste or the, 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 the taste out of your mouth that's tried to bring hope deferred in that area of your walk with God. And he's going to allow you to taste of the goodness of God. He's going he's gonna to cause your flavor to become favor in Jesus' name. And I just see the anointing of God coming on you and coming on your finances and, uh, and and also I see this business anointing around you and it's like there's these things in your heart even entrepreneurial dreams that never really got started, they never really got sparked and, 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 and I see the Lord just giving you the blueprints and giving you the keys for it and, 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 and I even see the courage and the strength to step out and to go for it and, and, and Lord I thank you God that even as she sowed two vehicles Lord God, that Lord those seeds in heaven Lord are the vehicles Lord that are going to unlock nations, that are going to unlock uh, cities that are going to unlock places and I just see the missions around you and I just see like the Lord uh, it's like the Lord says he's going to send you on a world tour <laughs> and, and he's going to pay for it he's going to send you all around the world and you provided vehicles for others to drive around town God's going to provide a vehicle called the gospel of the kingdom of God for you to go around the world and so Lord we do we just release that whoa in Jesus name Woo. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Father. Oh, we can't leave our friend out that sewed one car. Stand up. Yeah, come on. I mean, listen. Woo! You were in the vicinity. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Ah, just put your hands out. Father, we thank you, God, for our sister right now. And Lord, I thank you that, that Lord, you're, you're so, so, so in love with her. Ha <laughs> ha. Woo! You like you, 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 you're like a prayer warrior. I, I could see this, and I just see that whole like uh, this realm of just really leaning into intercession and prayer, and, and uh, even pushing in, and, and even at times with fastings, and uh, just going after the heart of the Lord. And, and, and I just see that the Lord says you've got His attention, and I see two bowls filled with the golden oil of heaven that are about to tip, and I see them tipping over you, and the oil coming down out of one says family, and it's the promises of family being touched by the glory, being touched by the goodness. And the Lord says that even as they were touched, even at younger ages, they will return because the glory of God is going to mark them and it's going to touch them. And I see the other one coming down and I see revelatory supernatural encounters coming to you. And I just see him releasing things. And there was a season when you saw much more and you heard much more in the Holy Ghost. And God is about to uh, take you from glory to glory. And the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. And in that place, he'll give you peace. And so, Lord, we just release right now. <laughs> Whoa, the oil. And we release right now the bowls of heaven being tipped out, being poured down, being released in Jesus' name. Whoo, I'm getting the oil overflow splash. Whoa. Shede de te ya papa. Whoo, shake ta ta ya ta ta. Hobra ba 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 she. Oreke te te ya ba be te. Hey, hey. Shobra banda ya ba bundo ya ba be te ya ba ba sha ta ta. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Lord. Ha, ha, ha. Lungs, right? Lungs right in here? Someone, you need a miracle with your lungs? Who is this? So I can feel it. Is it you? Where, it's right here in front of me. Who's this person? Could be like here in these first couple rows. Who needs a lung miracle? I can feel this. It's like, go, I, that's the way I, it works for me is I feel them. I'll, does this make sense? For your cousin, your cousin. <laughs> Hold up. Is there someone that has something going on? Listen, don't be afraid. Like, we're not making a bad confession. <laughs> we might go for your cousin here in a second. Jeremy. 
And it like burns. Yeah, I can feel it in my lungs. Come here. Whoo, Jesus. Uh, Lord, we just thank you, God. Whoo. Lord, I thank you for this general. Uh, here, just turn over here. Uh -huh, and take one little step back. Ooh, there we go. Oh. oh, yes. Lord, I just thank you, God, for a miracle. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that every attack of the enemy, Lord, every assignment of the, the, the devil to try to take, to try to steal, kill, and destroy tonight. We disarm it in the spirit, Lord. And I thank you, God, for the authority of your spirit. And I thank you, Lord, that every attachment, every attack, every place where the enemy would try to even slow you down, I say no in the name of Jesus. And we release power into your body. We release healing into your body. I command right now for every trace of, of, of the, the, the things going on in your kidney, everything going on. In, in that lung we just speak to it now and we command the burning to stop and we just declare over you whoo, that there is a supernatural health there is a supernatural health there is a supernatural health there is a supernatural realm of glory and I thank you God right now whoa, it clears in Jesus name whoo oh, thank you Lord thank you Lord Thank you, Jesus. Whoo! And Lord, I also thank you, God. <laughs> Whoo! Oh, I thank you, God, for for that. I just see this thing over you. It's like I see a house, and then I see call, I see a house, and then the name prayer. And 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 so the Lord says that somewhere in your life, there's been a there's been a promise that that, that, that the Lord gave you about your house being called to be a house of prayer, and all of these things for the nations. And I just see this anointing being poured out, being released, but also it's going to be released to this next generation through you. And that the Lord is going to begin to spark. He's going to begin to spark intercession and prayer and fire and and zeal and and hunger. And I just see like this whole thing of even a promise where the Lord gave you a promise that there was a, a, a prayer movement. There was something attached to this and even that, that, that you would see the, uh, uh, that people would, uh, uh, would begin to be caught up and raptured up and released into glory and having encounters with the king and even the wild stuff. It's like you've been saying, God, I don't want the mediocre stuff. I want the wild stuff. I want to see the crazy, 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 crazy anointing of God's glory come upon a generation that there will be even more undignified than that and I just see this lioness anointing on the inside of you roaring in intercession to heaven and releasing the, uh, the, the seeds of prayer and faith that, and, 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 and I see them being released back in the form of a harvest Woo. and so Lord we do we call forth the harvest in my sister's life of the prophetic promises the prophetic words and Lord I thank you God Woo! that she is a house of prayer for the nations and that Lord she's going to pour that anointing out into an entire generation of young ones who are hungry to know God and even some who are not because they're going to get awakened in Jesus name <laughs> whoa Woo! Ah. <laughs> oh. Woo! Ah, whoa <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> she feels good? Come on, give Jesus a big hand. Woo! How's the lungs feel? Yeah, so, but it's good now? Come on, presence all over her. <laughs> presence is all over me. See, you can't be the bartender without getting a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Jesus. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> mm, Jesus. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I'm just building myself up in my most holy faith. And we're stirring it up tonight. Shoo. Come on. Stir it up, Lord. Woo. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for the open heavens that's in this place. 
Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the release of your glory, Lord. I thank you for the, the release of your goodness, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that even tonight, Lord, you want to touch people so deeply in the spirit, God. Lord, that you want to give us the big drink. Woo! Lord, you want to come with the big drink, Lord, not the little drink. Listen, he just, he wants us to be free. He wants us to be loved on. He wants us to be encouraged. And I'm excited because, you know, I had my message confirmed three or four times. <laughs> oh, by the time I got here. And, 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 and listen, I just really believe that God wants to release a Genesis 28 moment tonight where the angels of heaven begin to ascend and descend from the throne and they begin to move in your life and they begin to bring breakthrough in the things and the areas where you need breakthrough. And it's much like Daniel where, where, where Daniel is praying and, and, and interceding and asking the Lord for breakthrough and all of a sudden after 21 days the angel shows up and he says that your prayers were answered the very minute that they came off of your lips to the Father and when they were answered God sent Michael and the resistance of the prince of Persia was destroyed. See, God's about to destroy some resistance tonight to the things that God wants you to do and where He wants you to go. But He's also going to release open heaven encounters in people's lives. And, and, and you know, this stuff, it's interesting because I don't preach on this too often, but we did do an open heavens weekend last year at the Fire and Glory outpouring. And the Lord kind of stirred up this whole thing of open heavens in my heart for the next season. And, and, and I want to just say this, is that God wants to teach us about that realm. And, and, and he wants to give us an understanding because, woo, wow, uh, we're going to have a good night. Whether I drew, drew, <laughs> uh, so listen, just, just have fun. You know, we're allowed to drink in church. I mean, this is the only job you can drink on the job and be okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, listen, you do it anywhere else, you're fired. You know, you do it in church, they're like, hallelujah. <laughs> But, but you got to understand, God wants to open up the heavens and He wants to bring some revelation. And He wants to release awakening. And awakening releases identity. And, and, and see, I'm excited because in the midst of revival, God wants to release identity to the church. He wants to release identity to the church to where we begin to stop looking at ourselves like religion looks at us. And we begin to see ourselves the way the Father looks at us. And, and, and I'm telling you, whoo, when you begin to discover who you are and whose you are, it changes the game. It changes everything because now it doesn't matter what people think. Now it doesn't matter what people say. I mean, listen, who wants the peace that surpasses all understanding tonight? Woo! Well, if you want the peace that surpasses all understanding, you got to lose your understanding. Woo! Come on. you got to lose your right to understand. you got to just go, okay, Jesus, I don't understand, but I'm going to trust you. Come on. How many know that's not easy to do? But you know what? God wants to help you do it. <laughs> He wants to release the big drink. <laughs> and we're, we're going we're gonna to get down, I'm telling you. But um, Genesis 28, if you have Bibles, you can go there. It says, Now Jacob went up from Beersheba and went towards Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he laid down in that place to sleep. And then it goes on and says, Then he dreamed a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth. Its top reached the heaven, and there the, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The, the land which I, you lie, I give to you and your descendants. And I want you to see this because here is Jacob having a Holy Ghost encounter. Woo! See, I want to bring some definition and some understanding to what I, God, what I believe God is doing in the midst of awakening in this season. See, what God is doing is God is releasing a grace for there to be a, a, an encounter zone. It's much like Moses. How many know Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights up on the mountain with God, and he was what? He, he was exposed to the manifest glory of God, and when he came off that mountain, he began to reflect the very person that he had been with, and people began to see it physically shine. See, what is revival and what is the season that we're in called awakening? It's a season where God is, is, is releasing the, the, the glory of God in a manifest way that we can have times to where we encounter that glory in an extended period and we can begin to let the Spirit of God have His way in our lives. And what He does is He reintroduces us to Him, but He reintroduces us to the new us. See, that's what, that's what it's all about. And, and see, God wants to release a move of the Spirit where, that, that begins to touch all generations. It begins to touch all generations, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And listen, we're about to see Jacob come into the kingdom. 
We're about to see the youngest generation so on fire for God that, listen, you're not going to be able to stop them, and, and, and nor will you want to. You want to get behind them and be like, yes, go. You know? and, and, and I'm excited because in this place, whoo, Jesus is about to, he, he's about to release acceleration. I can see it in the Spirit. He's about to release the Spirit of acceleration. If you want that, put your hands up. He's going to mark people tonight with acceleration, and I'll tell you why, because he has to. He needs to accelerate us to the place where we need to be in this next season. I'm telling you, some of you are going to grow, you know, three, four, five, six, seven years in the next year by the Spirit of the Lord. He's going to mark you. He's going to anoint you. He's going to cause his glory to be seen on your life. Whew. And it's because we live under an open heaven. And I love it because it says the angels of God were, were ascending and descending. Notice it says they were ascending first, which means the angels are already with you here on the earth. Which means that we've already got angels assigned to our lives so that what? They can ascend into the heavens and they can bring back down revelation from the throne. See, God's about to release some things tonight. Listen, he told me, uh, 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 he said, when you go to Seattle, he said, people are going to go home with someone they didn't go home with before or they came with before. He said, I'm going to assign angels to people. <laughs> See, I didn't, do a good, I didn't do good articulating that. This is what he told me. He said, Jeremy, I want you to tell the people of God, if they're hungry and they receive the word of the Lord, he said, they're going to go home with somebody tonight that they didn't come in with. And you've got to understand, uh, the realm of the angelic is powerful. When the angelic comes, a breakthrough happens. Now listen, I, I want to just be clear. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I mean, I remember I had an open vision one time. I was praying. Uh, I was worshiping God and eating some corn nuts. And uh, I mean, it's what was happening. And, and, and I was there, and, and, and you know, I, I, like a squirrel, I was eating them. You know, and, and, and here's what happened. <laughs> all of a sudden, I went to an open vision. And I see a massive door, and I see, I'm, I'm in the heavenly realms, I see a massive door, and the word breakthrough written over the top of the door. It was like neon light breakthrough, and all of a sudden I get excited, because I'm like, who needs some breakthrough tonight, right? I'm like, breakthrough, come on. And, and, and then all of a sudden Jesus appears on my right hand side. And he's right here, he's got keys in his hands, and, and I know that the door to breakthrough is going to be open. And in this experience, I get so excited, I run to the door, I grab the handle, I, I start pulling on it like this, but I can't open the door. And I put my foot on the wall, I'm trying to pull, and, and nothing's happening. And then I hear Jesus behind me, he said, take three steps back and watch what I do. That's what he said. And I went, oh yeah, he does have the keys. You know, it's like one, two, three. And Jesus just snaps his finger in the door, it goes, Boom, almost flies off the hinges because a wind hits the back side of the door and when the door flings open, an angel stands in front of me and I see the angel and I look at Jesus and he's, he's like in such joy and I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me, Jeremy, I want you to tell my people that now is the season that I'm going to release breakthrough and he said this, he, he said, I'm about to do for my people what they cannot do for themselves. And he said, I'm going to release the angelic hosts of heaven to move on their behalf to release breakthrough. Yeah. And see, I'm telling you, some people, they go, well, wow, why do we need to have angels? Well, listen, if you don't want yours, I'll pray God lets me have them. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm in the, I'm in the angel adoption collection agency. I'm like, God, anybody that doesn't want one, just give them right over here. Because I've, I've seen angels in the meetings. they got their hands and they're twiddling their thumbs like this behind people. And I used to go, what does that mean? And then the Lord told me, he said, they're bored. And I said, what does that mean? He said, that person, the human they're assigned to does nothing for the kingdom. And I went, wow. You know, and, and, and then I was like, can I have them? <laughs> And see, Jesus wants to mess us up because when angels show up, breakthrough shows up. And, and I mean, I'll never forget, I was over in uh, Myanmar and Burma, I, I, and it was crazy because, you know, it, it, probably four or five years ago, it was a closed nation, which means that it was controlled communism. They didn't allow people to just come in and preach the gospel freely, but praise God, now the, uh, it's opened up and people are preaching every week. It's amazing. And so we showed up, and we did a, this is, I don't know, three, four years ago, and we did a healing campaign, because you're not allowed to call it a healing crusade in those uh, places, because how many know it's offensive to call it a crusade, because that means it's a holy war, right? 
So we said, no problem, healing campaign, you know. Um, and, and, and so, you know, what's wild is we had about 800 people show up. No advertisement. They just heard about some miracles that happened. And, 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 and all of a sudden, I remember the first night I get up to worship God. And I go, God, what are you going to do? And I see angels come into the room. And, and there are these breakthrough angels. And, and there's healing angels. And I thought, okay, this is unusual. And they came right in. And they lined up on the stage, like all the way across. And they were like militant. They were standing there like this. And, and almost as if they were going to salute and 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 and, and so i said what do we do and he said release the angels i mean no we're sometimes we're like oh i see an angel well that's cool but why is he there all right and so i said okay and i got up and i said how do i do that psalm 103 20 says this it says that the angels uh, it says that uh, they excel in strength and uh, but here's the key it says that they watch over the word of the lord to perform it so if you can decree god's word then the angels of heaven will back it up so I stood up and I began to decree, God's going to release healing power tonight. And, and you know what happened in that conference? Uh, it's the craziest thing. We have it on video. Over 500 people got healed. And, and here's the crazy thing is over 30 doctors verified cases of cancer were instantly healed. And, and not only were the cancers healed, but, but listen, they were like, like they told me, like, we're going to have a healing meeting. I'm like, of course we are. They're like, no, you don't understand. And I said, what do you mean? They said, you know, we're, I said, we pray for the sick all the time. They go, no, no, you don't get it. Like, you think your words of knowledge is a healing meeting. We've had like seven or eight people pull their family member off life support, and they're in the paramedics downstairs right now. And I went, oh, my gosh, we're going to have a healing meeting, you know. And at that point, how many know you go into the fifth level of tongues, which is panic? You're like, shabba da 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 Because... Uh, you're not prepared for that. And you know what I did? I ran downstairs. And now here's the thing. My wife, man, she ain't scared of nothing. She's like, you know, me and Miranda go down. I'm thinking like, man, they look pretty frail. She's on top of the thing. In the name of Jesus. You know? I mean, listen, and I'm over there. I'm like, I better put my hand on there and get a testimony with her, you know. And, and but we prayed for like seven different people that were like, they're going to die if they don't get healed. And God touched all of them, you guys. And, I, and I'll never forget it. It was one of the craziest weekends we've ever had. And, and, and like, it, it, was, it was wild. And, 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 but you know what happened? God released healing angels into the meetings. And, and healing angels, like in John, you know, chapter 5, they, they come down, they stir up the healing waters, you know, and whoever's sick first gets into the water, gets healed. And, 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 and I, I just really feel like God's going to release some angelic hosts tonight. And, 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 and listen, this is the beautiful thing. We're not waiting for them to come. They're already here. They're already here. That, some of you just got the chills like, uh-oh, he's here. You know, not one. Every one of you got angels. I laugh all the time. You know, people are always like, you know, religious people. They're like, oh, yeah, well, this guy's got a hipster angel, you know, because I wrote an article called The Angel of Promise, and the Lord gave me a whole word about the angel of promise and revival and all these things. And, 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 and I'm laughing because they're like, we all know there's only two angels, Gabriel and, you know, uh, you know, Gabriel and Michael. That's how religious people think. I go, oh, you forgot one. His name was Lucifer. Right? And then, and then I'm like, you guys, like, do you realize that the Bible says that there's an innumerable amount of angels in heaven? I'm pretty sure that, you know, uh, one of them's name is Fred. You know how I know? Because my mom told me when I was eight years old, I talked to Fred every day. And, 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 and you know, it's crazy. It's, whew, I, I laugh about that. But then when I got older and got saved, I met Fred. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? Some people, they don't like that. But listen, you can't argue with fruit. That's what it's all about. It's all about fruit. And, 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 and here's the thing is, whoo, Jesus, I'm trying to break something for you because God doesn't want us to be religious about this stuff. I mean, you've got to understand people are like, the devil's after me. You know, I mean, like, come on, we do that. And you've got to understand there's two-thirds more angels than devils, you guys. I mean, when, when, when the devil got the boot, Come on, I like to tell it how it is. When the devil got the boot, he got booted. <laughs> See you later. He got booted out of heaven when he tumbled down into the earth and then came to himself. Come on, let's not act like he's that powerful. Now, we're not ignorant and do stupid stuff like go slap him in the face without, you know, God telling you to actually do some things. But what I'm saying is that we don't need to be afraid of the enemy. And you know what? Two times, I mean, people that get real upset too and the glory comes and angel feathers start falling and people start falling out and they're like, you know, mad like, ah, those aren't real angel feathers. There's a pigeon up there that blew up in the... 
It takes more faith to believe that than Jesus. I'm like, come on. And I always tell people, if you don't like the feather, what you going to do with the whole angel? When the whole angel shows up, you, you listen, you're going to need a pamper. And so you got to understand, God's going to release the angelic hosts. And, and here is Jacob. He's having this crazy encounter. And it, it says that Jacob went from Beersheba towards Haran. And, and, and he put his head in a certain place. And it was upon a rock. And then the heavens opened. And the, uh, the, the angels began to ascend and descend. And it says that, that, that God was, was looking down from heaven. And, and, and he began to talk to Jacob. Listen, when we encounter God in his glory, he begins to speak to us. He begins to amplify the things of God. When we begin to put our our trust in Jesus, you want to know what it is to lean your head on the rock? It means to lean not on your own understanding, but to trust Him. And and, and when you you, you put your, 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 your mind, when you fix it on things above, listen, He begins to release things above. And, and, and you know what happens is he, he, he puts his head upon the rock. How many, how many know that God wants to give you a kingdom mindset? He wants to give you the mindset of Christ. Because when you get the mindset of Christ, listen, the angels are with you always. Everywhere you go, they start doing stuff. I mean, I've had angels show up in the weirdest places and do the craziest things. And, 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 and uh, you know, I'm a seer, so I have visions all the time or I'm aware of them. But, but you've got to understand that they're with you as much as they are with me. Because God has assigned them to everyone. And, and here's the thing. Here is Jacob. He lays his head down on a rock. He, God starts speaking to him about inheritance. And you've got to understand that, that, that when God starts to move on the earth, when, when he begins to prove his open heaven, because listen, nobody's ever shut the heavens since Jesus rose again from the dead, you guys. The only closed heaven are believers that don't believe. And you know what it always has to do with? What's between their ears, which is called their mindset. And God wants to take us from glory to glory and from strength to strength, but we got to begin to believe the Word of God. And, and I'm telling you, it doesn't mean that it's always easy, but, but guess what? We live this life by faith, you guys. You know, I mean, and, and I'm excited because he's going to open some things up. But you've got to understand that here is Jacob having an encounter with God. In fact, I don't think he even knew God at that point. I think he was someone who was living vicariously through his, his father and his grandfather's faith in, in, in God. And this is actually an awakening moment where God introduces himself to an orphan and he becomes a son. See, what is the purpose of revival? What is the purpose of awakening? What is the purpose of reformation? Listen, I want to just say this. Reformation is long-term thinking. It's uh, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. Revival is now. And you know what? You can't have 20, 30, 40 years down the road uh, awakened until you encounter God now. And, 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 and see, I, I'm excited because people are going to get this now thing and then every single day of their life it's going to be now. It's going to be the next morning, now Monday, now Tuesday, now Thursday, now Friday. Now, I mean, listen, he wants to do it 365 and on leap years, 366. Woo, come on. Jesus. And, 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 and here's the thing. Jacob has this encounter, but what's crazy about it is in, to, to fully understand the encounter, you've got to back that thing up. You've got you to back it up, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to Genesis 27. And here is Jacob. And guess what he and his mother are doing? You know what they're doing? They're, 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 they're being sneaky. In fact, here's, here's his father. He's, you know, Isaac is so old, he's blind as a bat. That's what the Bible says. And I mean, listen, he can't see, and he decides it's time for me to pass my inheritance. So he calls Esau, his firstborn son, and he says, I'm going to pass my inheritance to you. I want you to go and hunt, get some game for me, make a, make a meal for me so that, you know, I can bless you. And, and so what happens? He takes off, and now all of a sudden, uh, Jacob's mother, Rachel, goes, this is our opportunity. And she goes, we got to trick your father. How many know this is just not going good? I mean, listen, if you thought your family's the only family with drama, it's been happening for thousands of years, all right? Now, now here she is. She's like, listen, quickly, we got to do something. Your brother's out hunting the food. Listen, I cook better than him. I'll cook his favorite stew. You just go and steal your brother's clothing, put his cologne on, and, and, and your brother's hairy. I mean, listen, you got to understand, this is a cruelty to animals situation because somewhere there was a goat that got stripped. <laughs> you know, I mean, that thing was... Ah! That, 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 listen, they tore a strip off that goat. 
And then they taped it to the arms of Jacob. I mean, listen, this is a weird scene. That's what the Bible says. And, 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 and so, the, I mean, even put it on his face probably. I mean, listen, this dude had to, I mean, could you imagine, Mr. Goat, we love that you have a goatee, but not no more. <laughs> you know, put it on him. <laughs> he had the goatee. <laughs> And you know what happens? He comes in and, and, and here is Isaac. He's trying to feel like, well, it smells like my son and he's hairy. Well, he's definitely hairy, you know, and it's like, and, and you know what he does? He blesses Jacob and like a good old soap opera, guess who shows up right at that time, right? Here comes good old Esau. And, and you got to understand, Esau was like a manly dude. I mean, this guy's big, red, and hairy. That's what his name means. And, 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 and not only that, he's like a hunter. But you got to understand, Jacob was different because he was a dreamer. He was somebody that, uh, you know why Jacob gets the blessing? Because he wanted the blessing. But you got to understand there's a right way to go about it and then there's a wrong way. And listen, dressing yourself up like someone that you're not hoping to get a blessing from your father is not the way to do it. And so many people do that. You know, they dress themselves up like someone that they're not because they think the grass is greener on the other side of someone else's process. So you got to understand walking with God is a process. And if we run from the process, we, we, we belong the process. And I mean, uh, we all get into identity crises sometimes. And, and, and you got you to gotta understand that, that you're not to look to man, you're to look to Jesus. And I'll never forget when I first got saved, man, I was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm still crazy, but you know what? Hopefully it's harnessed a little better. But I remember the first time I went to a prayer meeting, it was with Lou Angle. I just got touched at the call, San Francisco. And the guy would like go like this all day, you know, and he would spit when he, when he prayed. And, 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 and then I, you got to understand, I got saved in my junior year of college, Northern California. I was a baseball player, and I was, I was at Sonoma State University. And the only church that I found that I liked was a Calvary Chapel church, which I still love those guys but I was a weird one I was on the couch while the pastor would preach his 30 minute sermon and all he could hear is <laughs> and then they would be like can someone pray to end the meeting and always I hijacked it Lord release the spirit of Elijah and I mean I would just go off and, and or at, di at dinner you know I would pray like 15 minute prayers and, and here's the problem I was like this prophetic dude that didn't have any understanding of, of who I was I was super gifted didn't even know it because I would be praying Lord I thank you for Africa getting saved you know and I'm, I'm going off and then this guy over here would go I hate this guy and I'd read his mail and I'd go Lord I rebuke hate and then he would and he would be like oh and he'd run out the house Serious. I, I, listen, this is like prophetic, uh, you know, gone uh, stupid, you know, because I didn't know. And I, I was crazy. And then, and then, you know, I got touched by Heidi Baker. So sometimes I just fall on the floor and go, ah. Oh! But it wasn't even that, like I really was getting hit. It was just like what I was doing, you know. And then I got around. I mean, listen, I could just go around the mountain, you know. I mean, whew, when I was a little kid, it was terrible. I, I grew up in Colorado, but the problem is that I didn't have a horse, and everybody else when I was a kid did, and so I thought I was a cowboy. It lasted two weeks. I dress up like a cowboy, and then I go to real ones, and like, where's your horse? I'm like, oh, I'm out of here, you know. Like, it just didn't work. And then after that, I deceived myself into thinking I was like from the hood, but I was like from the burbs, you know. And I was a baseball player, football player, you know, and, and I was like, you know, I, I was walking on, I was walking around like I was all gangster and my dad was confused, my mom too, because I'm on the phone, I'm on, I'm on the cell phone that they pay for, you know, and I'm like, I, you know, I, I'm over there, I'm like, man, this life is hard, you know. My dad's like, what are you talking about? We give you allowance, boy. And I'm like, dad, be quiet, we're from the hood, you know. So I'm telling you, I went through so many phases. And this is Jacob dressing himself up like someone that he's not hoping to be blessed, right? And, and all of a sudden, he comes into the glory. He comes into the open heaven. The heavens open. All of a sudden, he lays his head down in a certain place and he meets Christ. And what happens? Heavenly identity is released to him in the mist. All of a sudden, angels begin to ascend. They begin to descend. All of a sudden, God the Father, he begins to reveal himself to Jacob. And, and, and I can relate to Jacob because uh, before I got saved, I lived vicariously through my mother's faith. Do you know I believe that Jacob was living vicariously through his father's faith and his grandfather's because he heard all the stories. And I mean, could you imagine being Jacob? I mean, like... Your dad and your, your grandfather are like the, uh, the most amazing, coolest people in the world. 
You know, it's like, well, you know, my, my, my father, he was going to get killed, but then like a goat showed up over here, you know, in the thicket. And, they, and you know, my, my, my grandfather, you know, he's kind of the dude that talked to God and God told him that we were all going to be a tribe and a thing, you know. And I mean, like, come on. And, and then here he is, and, and, and he's like, you know, uh, having this encounter. Listen, when I, and, and you know what? I don't believe he even knew who God was till that moment. And see, a lot of people live in religion. They have a religious form of godliness that denies the power. They, uh, listen, they know a whole bunch about God, but they don't really know God. And, and you know what God wants to do? He wants to awaken you into a place of reality when it comes to who he is. Listen, I, I, my mother got healed of breast cancer when I was 13 years old. She had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. He appeared to her after she cried out with the Bible, reading it for the, the, the first time, and said, God, if you're really real, then heal me. He shows up in a room. I watched her go from bald, looking dead, uh, looking to all of a sudden life. And, and how many know in that moment of time you can't tell me that Jesus ain't real? But you know what? I didn't have a real relationship with God, and I had a weird relationship with God. <laughs> because I was a baseball player, I said, God, I'm going to read the Word every day and every morning on, uh, you know, because it's good luck for me to play baseball good. So the Word was getting in me for like some, from 13 years old all the way to 20 when I got saved. And, and it was like getting in there, it was getting in there. And, 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 and what was funny about it was that makes for a weird heathen. Because you go to the bar and, uh, you know, uh, actually I got saved at 22, but when I go to the bar, I'm like, you! And they're like, what? And I'm like, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, pop! You know, hitting dudes. And, and just like, I mean, I was a weird heathen. I'm always preaching to everybody, you know, the, you know, well, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, I will fear no evil. They're like, dude, what are you talking about? I'm getting ready to... I'm getting ready to pitch on the mound. I'm quoting these things. And then the night before, I'm drunk like a skunk, you know, and they're like, I'm confused. And if they said something to me, I'd knock them out. So they just left me alone. And, and, and then all of a sudden, I'll never forget when, whew, I'm telling you, I had, a, I had an encounter at the call. I've told this story here before, but I had an encounter at the call and I got baptized with the fire of God for three days. And all of a sudden, I went home and I'm like, Mom, I know God. Mom, I know God. I, I know who he is now. I know what you've been talking about all these years when I thought you were a psycho. I was like, God, and I'm two times as psycho as you. Oh, you know. I mean, no, that's, you don't have language for it when you get saved. And see, this is what's happening with Jacob. He has this crazy encounter with the glory of God. And all of a sudden, the angels of heaven ascend and descend. And, and, and all of a sudden, he begins to uh, literally hear the voice of his father begin to tell him his destiny. I mean, listen, have anybody ever made a decision for God? Well, God, this is what I'm going to do for you. That was me. I got saved. I was a baseball player. I said, God, I'm going to play pro baseball for you. You know, and uh, almost like I was making a contract with him. How I many know you can't make a contract with God? He makes a contract. You sign it, right? I was like, yeah, God, I'm going to do this for you. And, 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 and you know what? I even got a professional contract to play baseball. And then when I got it, the, I, I read this book. Man, that book messed me up. It was uh, by Rick Joyner, The Final Quest. And I read that. And, 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 and it got to this point where it said something about a, uh, the highest level mantle in heaven was a brown paper bag that was the mantle of humility. So I said, God, so humbly, you know, as I asked him. I was flying to Africa to go do missions. I said, God. I really want the humble mantle. And he said to me, he goes, well, you're going to have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and then in due season I'll lift you up. How many know sometimes he tricks you? I went, yeah, I love that verse, God. And he goes, good, give up your baseball career and follow me. And I went, God, no! I said, God, I thought that the mantle of humility looked like a Dodgers uniform. I'm a, I'm a Giants fan. <laughs> I was still trying to get in there at least. <laughs> and, and, and the Lord said to me, he said, listen, I've not called you to play baseball. He said, I called you to preach the gospel. And he said, if you're willing to give up your dream to live mine, you'll, you'll preach in every stadium you would have played in. That's what he told me. So people that give me words, you're called to stadiums. I said, yep. First promise he ever gave me. And I've done some stadiums. We preached to 30,000, 50,000, 40,000. But, but I'm believing for it in America, you guys. And, and, and I believe that there's going to be many people who do it, not just one. And, 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 and so you've got to understand what was happening in this encounter with Jacob and what was happening in my life is I was getting to know the God of heaven. I was getting to know God for myself. If you're here tonight and you, you don't know Jesus for yourself, he wants you to. 
If you're here tonight and you've been living vicariously through your brother, through your mom, through your father, maybe you've been in church for a long time, you've been living vicariously through your pastor. Listen, God wants to meet you tonight with his glory. He wants the realm of heaven to open up over your life. See, what happens when the heavens are open and revival begins to be released and the spirit of God comes down is God begins to encounter us and he begins to separate the false uh, identities from the real identities. And all of a sudden, all of the stuff that's just not him begins to fall to the ground. But here's the beautiful thing. He begins to empower the stuff that is him. Whoo, Jesus. ha, <laughs> ha. See, I, I'm excited because you got to understand that God wants to give you boldness. He wants to give you boldness just to step out and do things that nobody else does. And, and, and when you get touched by God, you don't care what nobody thinks. You don't. You, I mean, listen, I, I thought I was bold and then revival broke out. <laughs> and I'm like, you, you try th- preaching at least 25 sermons where you can't talk. <laughs> and, 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 and then all of a sudden we'll see how much you've lost your dignity. <laughs> I mean, I would have been terrified to, to, to have that happen to me before, but now I'm like, well, there's another 200 services coming. You know, like, I mean, just whatever. And, 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 and you know, even in the streets, man, I, I love it because one of the things we love is streets in, in, in San Diego. I mean, we go all the time. And, you know, David here, he's like, he's like an evangelistic machine. Like, this dude will pray for anyone, anywhere, anytime, so I like hanging out with him. And, and we go get coffee, and I'll never forget, we got coffee, we're sitting there, we, we like cortados. They're like these really good coffees, you know, and, and we're sitting there, and I, my ear goes, it goes kind of numb on the right side, and I go, huh, I think someone, uh, I think someone needs a healing. Listen, when, you, when stuff happens outside of church, anybody ever got hit by God? outside of church remember there's an open heavens with you everywhere you're going he's going with you and sometimes he'll get your attention so my ear goes you know and I go oh I think someone needs a miracle in their ear but here's the problem God didn't tell me who I've prayed for thousands of people you guys and he still didn't tell me who and I'm going oh man this means I gotta step out because I'm like who is it God he's like nothing you know and so I go okay whatever there's two people here I go you do you have something wrong with your ears They're like man you're stupid no I don't you know and I'm like strike one you know and I go oh surely it's the guy at the counter putting milk in his coffee I said hey do you have an ear problem strike two he's like no man you know and then and then i'm like oh and then and then i go okay it's got to be the person behind the counter so i go up there there's three of them i'm like we got a good chance here there's three of them i mean i so i'm like do any of you girls have ear issues and they're like nope we hear perfectly you know i'm like ah and at that point i'm like i'm out of here you know and then the holy spirit says ask him again and i went oh finally you're talking to me okay and now i'm like so i go over there and go which three of you has an ear problem they said we told you we don't have an ear problem now the whole place is looking at me And this one lady right here goes, oh, that's my husband. He's right there. And points over at him. He's against the wall. And he's like. (laughs) And now me and David have a captive audience the whole cafe. (laughs) So we go over there. And I'm like, we're going to pray for your ear. At this point, it's not a choice. (laughs) I said, we're going to pray for your ear, man. And God's going to heal you. And he's like, okay. So we pray for his ear. God heals his deaf ear. I mean, like it pops open right there. And then, and then David's bold, man. He's like, you know what, man? You got glasses. You don't need them anymore. He's like, in the name of Jesus, just praise for him. The guy's eyes get healed on the spot. And you know what I've learned is everywhere we go, there's an open heaven. I mean, I've like, I, I, have I told the story about the rat dog here? I'm telling you, I remember when, when God started getting a hold of me about this stuff. I was in college, and I'm walking down the street. I got my headphones on. And this was back in the day when you got those disc mans. Remember those? I was so zealous for God. You talk about, like, you know, not knowing who I was yet, and I'm trying to get God's attention. Like, anybody ever tried to, like, show God that you love him, you know? I mean, like, of course we should show God we love him by living for God. But sometimes when you don't know who you are, you do crazy stuff to try to get him to know that you love him. And he's like, I already love you. You know, and I was at a bus stop, you know, and I'm, I got my disc man on. And, and it, you know, I was like, God, I don't care what nobody thinks. I'll worship you right now. And I got down on my hands and my knees. And back then it wasn't like, you know, these prophetic songs you could sing that, that are like kind of, you know, they, they're, they're like spiritual, but they're not really like to the point. It was like, Lord, I lift your name on high, you know. And I love to sing your praises. And so I'm, I'm there on my knees doing this. And I'm trying not to turn too much. Because if I do, the, the CD will go and flip out. So I'm down there and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. And as I'm doing it, I'm like, God, I'm an idiot. But, and in my mind, I'm going, die, flesh, die. Lord, I lift your name on high. And then a wind goes, 
win. I'm like an angel, and I opened my eyes, and the bus left. I had to walk five miles, and I was like, I'll walk for you, Jesus. Yeah. It's called misplaced passion, all right? Zeal without knowledge. And listen, I'm telling you, that's okay for a season. But if it's like that for 20 years, we got to do something about it. Come on, somebody. See, what is revival about? Revival's about encountering God. It's about encountering the, the person of the Holy Ghost. It's about encountering Jesus. It's about the manifest presence of God. I mean, listen, whoo, people come up to me all the time and they go, what makes what you guys are doing, God, and, or, or revival and, and what everybody else is not doing, uh, you know, or whatever. And, and, and I just, all I can tell them is, well, one thing I know is that God is omnipresent, but he's not always manifest present. And where the manifest presence of the Lord is, that's the spirit of revival. Because revival means this. It means to bring dead things back to life. And you know what brings dead things back to life? God's spirit. Oh, God wants to bring some things back to life tonight, you guys. And, and not only that, God wants to speak to people. He wants to, he wants to speak to you about your destiny. He wants to speak to you about your identity. He, I, and, and here's the beautiful thing is everywhere we go, we got to open heaven. You know why I know? Because Jesus told us so. Woo! Come on, somebody. He did. How many remember in John? Uh, you know, it, 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 wow. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Woo! Jesus. Whoa. Ha 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 ha. Whoa, Jesus. Ha 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 ha. Wow. Mm. Woo. Ha 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 ha. Woo, Jesus. Ha 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 ha. Whoa, Jesus. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Woo, Jesus. Wow. Ha ha ha. Oh, Jesus. Yay. Woo. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Woo. That's a break. We drink break. Oh, Jesus. Woo. Shit. Hee, hee. Woo. So I was saying. Ha, ha, ha. So Jesus sees Nathaniel. <laughs> he says, there's an Israelite without guile right there. And Nathaniel says, how do you know me? And he says, I've seen you underneath the fig tree. And he goes, you really are the Savior of the world. Throws himself at Jesus' feet. Ha, 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 ha. Woo, Jesus. And when he does, all of a sudden, Jesus says, Nathaniel, you're going to see greater things than this. You're going to see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And listen, what he was really saying was this. As he was saying, Nathaniel, you think the gifts of the Spirit are amazing. He said, you're about to see greater things than this because I'm going to make my home in your heart. And when I do, the angels of God are going to ascend. They're going to descend from the throne of God and they're going to rest and they're going to remain on your life. Whew. Oh. And see, I'm excited because Jesus wants to mess us up tonight. And when this realm of glory comes, he'll change your life. He'll take you from a place where you don't know who you are to a place where you know. And he'll give you the realm of glory on your life that it rests and it remains. And, 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 and you'll never, ever, ever, ever be the same. And, and when the angels of God come, listen, he releases breakthrough. He releases breakthrough. Woo! He could touch cities and nations. He could touch people groups, families. I mean, listen, it's all about Jesus. And, 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 and one of the things that I like is this, is that Jesus likes to release the angelic to bring breakthrough. If they were ascending and descending around him, it might have been a pretty good key to why his ministry had miracles. Oh. Woo, they're already starting to ascend and descend. It's getting hot. It's getting real hot. <laughs> Woo! More Lord Mas. Ha, mas fuego. En el nombre de Jesús se sano. Woo, Jesus. Woo. Oh, man. Shuva baba kata ta yete yete. Hobro bob to to to. Yebere be te te te. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Lord, we love you. Woo, just one, 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 one. Ha, One, one, one last scripture. He, he. Oh, 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 man, I feel so good up in here. Woo, Jesus. Fill this place with your glory, God. Fill this place with your glory, God. 
Oh, come on. I want you to see this. Uh, see, the Bible tells us, it says this. It says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place, but he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Now look at this. It says, this is Jacob. The generation of those who seek him, those who seek his face. Woo! How many know that when you seek his face, it doesn't look the way that we think? <laughs> See, God wants to break the idea of what worship looks like. See, it goes on and it says this. It says, lift up your heads, O you gates, uh, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Now look at this. Lift up your heads, O you ancient gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, He is the King of glory. The Lord of hosts. Whew. I got a question for you. Have you ever seen a gate lift its head up? You ever seen a gate lift its head up? No, because gates don't have heads, but humans do because you're the gateway. Because you're the gate. And when you lift your head up and you lift your praise up to the King of glory, then the Lord of hosts begins to release the hosts of heaven. He says, this is the generation of Jacob. Those who will wrestle with God. We ain't got time to go down that. Uh, those who will walk with God in a place of allowing his spirit to touch them. Those who will put their trust and lay their understanding upon Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Woo! So you've got to understand, God is going to break this spirit in this generation of consumerism Christianity where people come to church to try to get something instead of give the king what's rightfully his. And as we begin to worship God the way that it's meant to be, which is this, it's not just about songs, because it is. How many know that worship is three things? It's this, ha, ah, Jesus, woo! It's thanksgiving, praise, and worship. And you know what? When we give thanksgiving, the glory comes. When we give thanksgiving, it clears the cobwebs. If you're ever in a place and you can't press into worship, just start to thank God for your family. Just start to thank God for your miracle. Just start to thank God for his presence. The devil leaves. And then you know what happens is all of a sudden we praise. And you know what? That's what we do in church a lot. We, we release praises. We release the high praises of God. And the high praises of God release the greatness of God. The Bible says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. But then there's the third aspect, and that's worship. And I don't believe that worship has to do with even singing songs. I believe it has to do with an attitude and a posture of our heart towards the king where we give him his rightful place as Lord and Savior and King, and we come with honor. We come with praise. And what do we do? We lift up our heads as the gates of heaven, and we begin to say, who is this King of glory? And every time the devil rears his head up, we take our eyes off him and we lift our heads. And as the gate of heaven, we begin to say, who is this King of glory? Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. Woo. Oh. And all of a sudden, the angels, the, uh, the angels go from, they start to, they start to get into formation. And all of a sudden, the Lord, strong and mighty, and they start to fly around the room. They start to move around. They start to be stirred up. And before you know it, angels from regions that are far away begin to see the stirring in the angelic realm. And they get curious. I've seen this. And they get curious and they come over. What is this? And they come and, and, and they're like, man, I want to join. There's a big old heavenly portal. The father's like, I got to get off the throne and look over this. Like, huh. Finally found a people undignified that love me. And they don't care what nobody thinks, even the devil or the religious devils. They're just going to lift their heads right now, even though that pastor's getting drunk. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Religious devils get burnt up in revival. <laughs> but here's the beautiful thing. Religious devils get burned up in revival, but the person gets set free. Hate the demon, love the person. Oh, I want you to stand. Come on up. Whoo, Jesus. Ha, 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 Jesus. Whoo. Oh, my.
Listen, I want to just say this. God wants to release awakening this week. And you guys have amazing generals in the faith coming in every single night. And not only that, you guys have been going after Jesus for more than a year and a half now. And I'll tell you what he's been doing in this place. He's been forming a new identity in him. A culture of presence, a culture of knowing their God. Have you know that when, when, when God finds a people who know their God, they can do great exploits. See, if you want to know what revival is all about, some people miss it. I've had leaders come to me and they go, we don't need more meetings. We don't need that kind of a model. If we just go out and, you know, we just got to get out of the church. And I'm looking at them going, you guys, you're missing the whole point. We need the presence of God. That's why we do meetings. If you're already in the place where you're like, well, I don't need another meeting, that means you're burnt out. That means you need to take some time, get out of the place of denial and go into your living room and get on your face. Because worship never started in the meeting. It starts at home. It starts in, in your car. It starts in your living room. It starts in your family. It starts when nobody else is watching. But there are times when the glory of God comes corporately. And there are times and seasons historically where God moves in great revival and great reformations are born out of those times of the movings of the Spirit. And so listen, I refuse to miss what God wants to do. I will not, I will not bow down to a religious spirit or a political spirit. I will not bow down to somebody's criticisms that doesn't even live what they talk about. All I want is Jesus. All we need is Jesus. We need Jesus, friends. Listen, the answer to awakening in America is hunger for Jesus. The answer to awakening in America is honoring the Holy Ghost. The answer to awakening in America is to begin to recognize we got a good Father. And He's not confused in heaven. He has things figured out. He is just looking for a generation to sell out to the presence of God. A generation like Jacob who will seek the face of God. And out of a place of seeking the face of God, they become the gateways. The supernatural gateway of heaven. On the earth where the angels ascend and descend. Where revelation comes down, miracles begin to come down. All of a sudden, atmospheres begin to be shifted. Atmospheres begin to be changed. Why do we do these meetings in extension? Why do we do weekends? Listen, I'll tell you why we do them. Because we're changing the atmospheres of cities. We're changing the atmospheres of nations. We're changing the atmospheres of families. We're changing the atmosphere of our own lives. And I believe tonight God wants to meet with us. He's looking for the hungry ones. He's looking for the ones that recognize if they call out to the King of Glory, He comes. And listen, He wants to come more than we want Him. Come on, just put your hands out. Coming down, 
coming down. Oh, the host of heaven, they're coming down, coming into the room. Eyes like fire. Eyes like fire. King of glory, we want to know you more. We want to know you, Lord. We want to know you more. Come on, put your hands up. Woo. Awaken love. Awaken love. Awaken love. Awaken love. Awaken love. Awaken love. Oh, let the heavenly host be released. Awaken love. King of glory, have your way. King of glory, have your praise. King of glory, have your way. Have your praise. Have your praise. Have your praise. Come on, just begin to lift up your your tongues to the Lord. Just begin to lift up your voice. Come on, there's an open heavens in this place. He's going to shift things in the spirit tonight. Warfare is going to be destroyed tonight. Oh, yeah, have you just begin to cry out to him lift up your heads all you ancient gates lift up your heads lift up your praise to the king of glory broken just come right now come to the altar don't worry about no one
voice of the Lord Oh, the God of glory thunders tonight He thunders tonight He's breaking down the strongholds He's breaking down the stronghold Every chain, every shackle is broken See the prison doors opening wide.
talking about.
If you're here tonight, and, let, and you can just relate with this message that was released about Jacob, and you haven't had that encounter with God yet, that's brought you into a place of sonship. It's like you know all about him, and you see other people getting touched by him, but you haven't had that intimate encounter like Jacob had. And you would like to have that tonight. Would you just lift up your hand real high? Just lift up your hand. Look at all the hands. Just keep your hand. If, if you're anywhere near someone, don't, don't start praying in their ear, but just place a hand on them. <laughs> just place a hand on them. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask, Father, for that encounter realm. Just open up above each and every one of these people with their hands raised. Father, we ask tonight, Lord, that by your grace, Father, that there would be a Jacob-like encounter that takes place for each of these. That there would be a, a dissension and an ascension of the angelic realm over each and every one. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just declare that encounter realm opening right now, right now right now that you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to strive anymore you wouldn't have to try anymore you wouldn't have to pretend anymore you wouldn't have to pretend like you're your brother or pretend like another believer like we have to dress up you have to talk the game or or look in, in order to get blessed but you you receive that blessing right now you receive that blessing you're a son of inheritance you're a daughter of inheritance and you don't have to pretend anymore because 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 of jesus because jesus has paid the great price you get to be a son and a daughter of inheritance right now. So we just declare encounters, encounters, encounters right now. Yep, yep, yep. Just receive it by faith. Don't worry about your feelings. Just declare, I am a son of inheritance. I am a daughter of inheritance. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just declare breakthrough right now. Breakthrough right now. Breakthrough right now. All unbelief go right now. All unbelief go right now. All fear go right now in Jesus' name. All fear, let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. Yep, 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 yep. We thank you, Father, for that angelic realm. Lord, for the activity in the angelic tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for these sons and daughters of inheritance. Lord, we thank you, Father, for new encounters for each and every one here tonight. Even in the spirit, we just declare activity, 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 activity. The whirlwinds, the whirlwinds. Yes, yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 more, 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 more. Yep, 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 come, come, Lord, come, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hey, I want the interns, that are, I want you to come up here, and we're going to lay hands on people. <laughs> now make sure people aren't falling without catching them. <laughs> but go ahead, just start to lay hands on people. I'm just going to pray over. Listen, I believe there's an awakening happening in this nation, in this season right now, that God's going to awaken love in the church, but He's also going to awaken love in families. I believe we're about to see a merging of the generations. Fathers and mothers and sons and daughters coming together for a move of the Spirit that the devil can't stop. So Lord, we thank you, God, for Jacob being awakened in Seattle, God. We thank you for this younger generation, Lord, the millennials coming in to the kingdom of God. We thank you, God, for an awakening of the Holy Ghost, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for the fathers and the mothers that are in this place tonight. For the brothers and the sisters. And we just ask for your anointing to come upon family. Oh, family in glory, we declare it in Jesus' name. Listen, just, just receive right now that love of the Father. Because ah, He's good. Whew. Thank you, Jesus.
If you're watching online, we're just going to bless you and release you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. You are loved. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Love you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night.